Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime and psychological cases, as well as a little bit of fashion and lifestyle sprinkled in where I can. Now today I'm back discussing another unsolved disappearance case. There's definitely a lot popping up in my research recently um, and a lot of you guys are requesting some, so that is what I'm bringing to you today. And today's case in particular is that of the unsolved disappearance of a young boy named Charlie Ross. Just going to put in my usual disclaimer that I like to include in all of my videos. In no way am I claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the cases that I cover over on my channel. I'm simply relaying the information that I'm able to find myself through research online, meaning that not everything is accessible to me. So that means that I may get some things wrong, I may mispronounce things or I may miss things out. And I apologise if I do any of those things. And you are all more than welcome to nicely correct me in the comments below if you're going to be nice about it. As I always say, this channel is not a place for negativity. So with all that being said, we are just going to get started discussing the case of Charlie Ross. The unsolved disappearance of Charlie Ross takes place in the year of 1874 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. On the 1st of July of the year of 1874, four-year-old Charlie Ross and his five-year-old brother Walter were staying at their father's lavish home. Their father lived in a place called Germantown in Pennsylvania, which at the time was a very well sought after area. It was very upscale, a very nice area. Not only was the area itself that he lived in believed to be a very safe area but it was also just a time in which there wasn't really a lot of knowledge about missing kids it wasn't really normal to have to worry about your child's safety uh, there wasn't a lot of fear of attackers and strangers you know hurting your children and your loved ones and this was way before the time that public safety became such a huge focus and way before missing children's cases were plastered all over every town and city and every possible venue that they could so just think of it as it being a completely different time it just wasn't really a time where you were constantly worried about your child's safety. Charlie and Walter had spent the afternoon playing on the front garden outside of their father's home and this was arguably kind of a normal thing for children to do especially at that time I mean what else would they have to do on a summer's day um, and also they were in earshot and eyesight of, of their parents and loads of other people on the streets all of his neighbours they were basically where they believed to be in a safe area because so many people could see them and hear them. While the two boys were out playing in the front garden, two men in a horse-drawn buggy pull up to them and began talking and addressing the two young boys. They basically asked them if they wanted to join them on their shopping trip to go and buy fireworks for the upcoming 4th of July celebrations. Due to how long ago this occurred, there are a number of conflicting sources regarding the details surrounding these two men. So some sources say that these two men were complete strangers to the two boys, that not only did no one in the area know of them, but the two boys had never met them before. Whereas other sources have said that in kind of the days and the weeks leading up to the disappearance, these two men were approaching the two young boys every now and then, seemingly just kind of being neighbourly and friendly, giving them sweets, things like that. So there was a number of conflicting sources. But either way, the two boys were only four and five years old and they were just kind of excited when these two adults had asked them to join them in their shopping trip. For buying fireworks not only was it exciting to buy fireworks themselves but it was also fun to just join in on whatever adults are doing and being unaware of the danger of leaving with strangers the boys headed straight into the carriage and the four drove off they drove for a while through the local area ultimately arriving on a street that neither of the young boys had ever been on before and they hadn't recognized where they were so they weren't really sure of where this shop was but the buggy at one point just stopped and pulled up outside of a storefront the two men handed Walter, the older brother, 25 cents and instructed him to get out of the cart and go and buy some fireworks inside the shop for them. Walter did exactly as he was told, but as soon as he stepped out of the carriage and he was cleared from its path, it drove off hastily, leaving Walter alone on this unknown street outside of a shop and with four-year-old Charlie Ross still in tow. Sometime during this endeavour, the boy's father, his name was Christian, was alerted by a neighbour of his of what the two sons had just kind of experienced outside of his home. The neighbour told him that she'd seen this buggy pull up to his house and address the two young boys. She didn't know what he said, but she said that one of the two men said something to the two boys and before long the boys were clambering into the buggy and driving off together. She said that she'd never seen these two men before and only became concerned when she kind of realised that Christian had no idea where the two boys were as obviously he had been expecting them to be outside their front garden. So this was when she realised that 
these men weren't known to the two young boys that they weren't supposed to be going with them they weren't family or anything and so she felt the need to go and tell him of what had just happened now as i'm sure you can imagine christian was in a state of complete panic as neither of the boys had been seen since this sighting although he decided to make the difficult judgment call to not alert their mother and his wife at the time of the incident. She was living in Atlantic City temporarily just for a brief period of time when all of this took place and he decided not to tell her straight away, presumably because he assumed that it wouldn't really be a huge incident that he'd be able to find them in the local area just having driven off with someone they knew. And this whole incident remained unknown to their mother until a few days later when she discovered a picture of one of the boys in a newspaper that she was reading with the headline missing child and obviously this must have been an absolutely awful way to find out that your son is missing. Some days after the disappearance of the two young boys, it's not known exactly how long but it is believed that he was uh, missing for at least around a day, five-year-old Walter just appeared on his father's doorstep out of the blue alone. I couldn't find any sources that specifically stated where Walter had been. Some sources say that um, a kind of neighbour or someone, a resident in the local area recognised him and picked him up and drove him home but other places say that it wasn't quite as simple as that so it's not known exactly how Walter got home or where he had been exactly but simply that Walter himself was found on the doorstep. And a lot of people have since said that this might simply be due to the fact that Walter himself was only five years old. He might not have known where he had been himself. So um, it isn't necessarily thought of as too weird as Walter is the only person who can provide any information and he was so young. Upon seeing Walter, Christian immediately had hope for the same safe return of his youngest son, Charlie. Although this hope would soon begin to fade the second that Walter began telling him of what he had endured. So with the two men driving off without him, all of that, that was when the panic really starts to set in that maybe Charlie had been the intended target after all. Not only did they have no idea who these mysterious men were or what they wanted with Charlie, but they had no idea at all where they were headed. And then things took a turn just a few days later on July the 3rd, when Christian received a letter addressed to him at his home. And the letter had, I mean, it's riddled with spelling errors. It's really kind of quite difficult to read. So I'm gonna do my best to read it out to you. The letter read, Mr. Ross, be not uneasy. Your son, Charlie Bruster, he all right. We got him and no powers on earth can deliver out of our hand. You will have to pay us before you get him from us and pay us a big cent too. If you put the cops hunting for him, you is only defeating your own end. We has got him fit, so no living power can get us from him alive. If any approach is made to his hiding place, then this is the signal for his instant annihilation. If you regard his life puts no one to search for him, you money can fetch him out alive and no other existing powers. Don't deceive yourself and think the detectives can get him from us for that is one impossible you hear from us in a few days. So I'm really sorry, I literally did just stutter through that entire thing. It is really difficult to read, but um, I'll have put it on the screen so you can actually read it for yourself. It's just completely incoherent, really. But essentially, they'd sent him this ransom letter saying that they would return Charlie if um, he paid this huge lump of money, which is obviously an extremely difficult predicament. Christian actually decided to contact the police straight away disregarding what they said in the letter. I think mostly because he, he was fearful for his son's life, but he was also very doubtful of these mysterious men's actual abilities, especially at the time this took place. It wouldn't necessarily be likely for them to be able to tell straight away if he had told the police. And so he decided that it was best to leave it to the professionals and leave their son his son's life in their hands. And then a few days later, Christian received another letter addressed to him, just reminding him that he still needed to pay this ransom amount for his son but there was no mention of him contacting the police which he had done so obviously this kind of just proves the doubt that they were actually able to know if the police were involved so it just kind of put a little bit of reasonable doubt in his mind that his son's abductors were even that powerful for what seemed like ages the police and charlie's family worked tirelessly in search of the young boy and for any answers any sign of who these men were what they were doing with him where they'd taken him but sadly every lead just seemed to go nowhere and then months later in december of that same year two men were caught attempting to break into a home in brooklyn their names were william mosher and joseph douglas and they had made a name for themselves as kind of being career criminals they 
carried out a number of different crimes, mostly like robberies and burglaries over the years. But in the scuffle of this attempted burglary in particular, one of the perpetrators was shot dead by a policeman, whereas the other perpetrator was just badly wounded and taken to hospital. The man that had been wounded would die from his injuries just a few hours later, but before his death, he actually confessed that he and his partner, who had just been shot in the burglary, were actually the ones who kidnapped young Charlie Ross. However, he claimed that neither of them had any knowledge as to what happened to Charlie Ross after that. They didn't know where he was to this day. And this confession was pretty much the only thing police then had to go on. Sadly, Charlie Ross's case remains unsolved to this day. There was no way of knowing if these two men were actually the perpetrators, whether it was a almost like a hired kidnapping, whether they were just kind of the muscle to actually carry out the kidnapping and if there was some sort of bigger reason behind it, there is honestly no way of knowing because nothing has come about and no sighting of Charlie Ross, nothing. And it's absolutely awful that this poor four-year-old boy could just be stolen and taken away from his, his family at such a young age with no indication of why or where he is. Charlie Ross's father continued to search actively for his son until he died in the year of 1987. And over the years, there have been a number of people who have kind of claimed to be responsible or have knowledge or even have spotted Charlie Ross in different locations. There were a few incidents in particular with some people falsely confessing to being in possession of Charlie basically all these years later because they had attempted basically to tap into the family's wealth. They wanted to get a bit of money from the family in a ransom payout, but none of these could ever be proven. None of these showed any signs of Charlie whatsoever. So there are no answers whatsoever into Charlie Ross's disappearance. And that is everything I'm going to discuss today. I hope you guys found this interesting. Sadly, it is another one of those disappearance cases where there just seems to be virtually nothing to go on. And it happened so long ago now that it seems very, very unlikely as time passes that we'll ever get any answers for this case. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.